from Los Angeles, it's the Tom Micah Show. Oh, God. And now, and now here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I want to start this hour telling you about a story that's going to lead to what we're going to discuss here. When I was 12 years old, my dad used to take me to the office every Saturday. He had to work on Saturdays. He had Mondays off. He worked Tuesday through Saturday. And so every Saturday, because I had to go to school on Monday, I had to get to see my dad. The only day off he had was Sunday. So I went to work with him on Saturdays. So every Saturday, I go to work with my dad. My dad used to work uh, in the lower west side of Manhattan. Low, low, lower west side. I mean, we... um, We used to pass the construction site of the World Trade Center on the way to his office. That's how far down he was. Just blocks from ground zero. That's where he worked. And when we went to the office, just like you can't pick your family members, you can't pick the people you work with. And my dad worked with a collection of people that can only be described as um, Not even barely normal. It was just a weird collection of misfits. All of whom somehow latched on. All of whom somehow made it into the union. I don't know how they did it. Anyway. There was one guy at the office. (laughs) This is going to lead into what we're going to talk about here. This is true. There was one guy at the office my dad worked with who had... um, a birth defect. And my dad always told me, don't talk about this. Don't mention it. Not because he'd ever had any experience. He just thought that it could make the guy very uncomfortable. And here was what his birth defect was, okay? The guy had one normal arm. His right arm was like normal. But his left arm... Well, to call it a stump would not be fair because it was more than a stump. It was a stump that had what looked like five warts on the end, which were actually like the beginning of fingers. Like the arm never completely developed. You stand in front of the guy and he's like gesticulating with his right hand. But his left arm is like it's an elbow stump. With like these five little stubs on it that looked like they were supposed to become fingers. And they never did. Now one would imagine that somebody with a good constitution would develop a sense of humor about it. Would try to diffuse the situation or whatever. But guess what? It never came up in conversation. He didn't make fun of it. He didn't like try to make you feel comfortable about it. He was there. He would, And by the way, summertime Always with the short sleeve shirts. The guy couldn't even like wear a short sleeve shirt. <laughs> he's, he's got short sleeve shirts on. You, every time you saw this guy, you saw the one hand gesticulating, and the other hand was not a hand. It was like a, a, a fore, uh, not a forearm, but what do you call the part of the arm above the elbow? A back arm. I don't know. It was like the, the top part of the arm and an elbow with five little stubby things coming out of it that looked like they were going to become fingers, but they never actually made it all the way through the process. And so my father used to say to me, whatever you do, don't mention Joe's arm. Don't mention it. Don't say anything about it. Don't mention it. Of course, I'm 12 years old. The minute I walk into that room, I am fixated on his little stub there with the little stubby fingers coming out. I couldn't I couldn't stop looking at. 
And my father, of course, is panicky. He doesn't want to bring me to the office anymore because every time I come in, I'm like seeking this guy out. And I'm like trying to have a conversation with him just so I could see his... Um, just so I could see his stump with the little stubby fingers on it. I, I wanted him to start talking to me and flailing it around. And I was supposed to not mention it. How can you ask a 12-year-old not to notice that? Of course I noticed that. Everybody I knew was normal, except this one guy with the stump. Now, fortunately for my dad, I never just blurted out, Hey, Joe, how'd that happen? What happened to your arm? I never said anything. But I thought about saying it all the time. I wanted to ask him, what are those little bumps on the end? Are those supposed to be fingers? What is that? In fact, this is a catharsis for me right now saying this on the air because it's what I thought for years, and I could never say it to him. Do those feel like fingers? Can you feel like you can, like, you know, reach out and, like... <laughs> it was his left hand that, that you know, never kind of, like, developed. What, what do you do with a wedding ring? Where do you put it? Look at those little stumps. No, he couldn't reach his ass with it, Gary. Wouldn't do any good to use toilet paper or anything. There's nothing he could do with it. It was, like, just, just kind of hanging there. And I swear the guy wanted to make you uncomfortable. Beyond making you comfortable, I think he wanted you to be uncomfortable because why would a guy with that stump wear a short sleeve shirt to the office? As often as he could, he had a short sleeve shirt. So those little stubs are like just kind of... Just kind of... The, the five little stumpy fingers were kind of like peeking out of the short sleeve. Now we had that guy, and I now as if that weren't enough, I'm 12, and you know I'm, come on, I go to PS70 in the Bronx. I got the normal kids around me and everything. Everybody's got two arms, two legs, two eyes, one heart. You know the deal. The brain stem is inside their skull. You know, normal stuff, right? And I go to my dad's office, and it was like a goddamn freak show. The other one that I was also not supposed to talk about was the guy who had a glass eye. And so when he looked you in the eye, he never looked like he was looking at you. So the guy would like, hey, son, how are you? He looked down at me and like his eyes were pointing in two different directions. Not only that, it was the newspaper business. My dad worked for the New York Post. So these guys are all heavy boozers. Half of them have like jaundice. <laughs> his skin is like yellow. And, and the, the guy's got one bloodshot eye and one clear eye. The clear eye is not the real eye. So he's looking at me, but I think he's looking at somebody else. Hey, son, came to work with your dad today, huh? I'm like, <laughs> I can't help it. And my dad is freaking, don't say anything. Don't, when Sid comes up to you with the glass eye, don't say anything. I'm like, <laughs> I couldn't help it. The guy's got a glass. He's got one bloodshot eye and one clear eye. How'd that happen? Because he's not. He's not only got one eye. He's also a boozer. So he's got one bloodshot eye and one clear, perfect eye that was never pointing in the right direction. Never. So my dad like worked at this freak show. That's where he worked. He worked at a goddamn freak show. I came in with the one guy with the stump of an arm with the little stubby fingers, and then the other guy with the glass eye. And I'm 12, and I'm not supposed to mention any of this stuff. Now I'm sure these guys have had people say stuff to them, but I was forbidden to mention what was wrong with these two. Forbidden. So now I know there are people out there right now. With, it doesn't have to be your dad at the office. It could be anywhere. It could be somebody you work with. It could be a neighbor. It could be your friend. <laughs> it could be anybody, okay? You know somebody who has something that is obviously wrong with them. And like the 3,000-pound gorilla, you're not supposed to talk about it. You're not supposed to mention it. You freak out if anybody even hints at it. 
like you just don't want it to come up in conversation. You just want to act like everything's normal. But in your heart, and it's just you and me right now, so think about this. Okay, In your heart, you know that person's not normal. You know that person belongs in the circus sideshow. There's nothing you can do about it. Like you have to sit next to them. Somehow they became your friend or they became your coworker, they became a relative or something. Like the kind of person you go up to, I don't know where, weddings, bar mitzvahs, confirmations, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. There's that one person who has that thing. That everybody says, don't say anything about it. Don't mention it. That when, when, when he comes up to you with that club foot, don't mention it. When he comes up to you with those lobster claw hands, just shake his lobster claw and don't say anything. Don't mention it. So I want to give you the opportunity, even though you can't mention it in the office, and you can't mention it at the family reunion, and you can't mention it at Christmas time, you can't mention it anywhere, okay? I want to give you the opportunity to tell us about that one person, that one person you know who has some kind of a defect that should put them in a circus sideshow, but they're not in a circus sideshow. They're living a normal life alongside you. Call me now and tell me about that one thing that's wrong with that one person that you're never supposed to mention. Sound, Tom. Sound like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Yo, Tommy, I got a question for you, brother. Yeah, Donnie. You need a sidekick on the broadcasting station? No, I don't. The Tom Likas Show. On 97... <laughs> the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Okay, you got that one person you know who has some kind of a defect, and you're not supposed to mention it. You're not supposed to talk about it. Maybe nobody ever told you whether you're supposed to talk about it or not, but guess what? You just think it would be kind of tasteless, kind of wrong, so you don't. Evelyn on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Well, there's this guy at work comes in all the time. He has no fingers except for his middle finger. Not only is he missing that, he's also got no palm except where it connects to his middle finger. No palm? No palm. Just Does he have like a blackberry he's instead? He's just got this long... Oh, you mean like an actual palm? No, palm. P-A-L-M. Yeah, I know. Like a hand. Yeah. yeah. So he just has this long, like, finger tentacle thing Your coming hand spray. straight out. What? Just oh, a kind of a tentacle thing. Yeah. It's absolutely disgusting. Yeah. And, you know, all I can think about is what he does in the bedroom with his wife. <laughs> disgusting. Here I come, buddy! <laughs> I'm going to stick this right all over you right now! Exactly. It's repulsive. Come on, it's repulsive, but at the same time, you wondered what that would feel like. Exactly. You have to. <laughs> <laughs> Touch me with that. Touch me with your tentacle, baby. <laughs> Come on, do it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you just can't stop looking at it. <laughs> Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Diane on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Diane. How you doing? The UK. I do. I'm doing great. Absolutely great. Okay, well, it's not really a defect, but my husband's cousin, Donna, at the holidays last Christmas, was coming home to, to town, and nobody had seen her for like three or four years. And <clears throat> it was Donna, but she came to Christmas, and she was gone. She had a, a sex change? Yep. No. And nobody was allowed to talk about it. You're supposed to pretend it never happened? Yes. <laughs> and we kept calling her Donna and then going, oh, uh, I mean, Don, and it was so awkward, and everybody just basically drank too much because we didn't know how to handle it. Come on, when you drink too much, somebody's got to, like, blurt it out. Hey! That would have been my sister. Come on! You're really Donna. Come on! <laughs> yeah, my sister-in-law wanted to go there, but we kept her in the kitchen. <laughs> It was very awkward. Come on, admit it. You had a sex change. Somebody went in and fixed the plumbing. Come on. She didn't look that much different, but just knowing that. They never do. Can I say that to all the people who've had sex change operations? You know what? <laughs> you all pretty much look the same. Still. Yeah, with a little nail polish or a hat on or something, but come on. <laughs> I love your show, Tom. I listen to you every day. Diane, thank you. Thank 
you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Chad on the Tom Like Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Oh, hi, Chad. I had this guy on my high school wrestling team. You wouldn't believe it. He had lobster claws for both hands. Oh, lobster claws. Did he have web feet also he frequently? Had, he, he had claws for feet, too. There's like two and a half toes. <laughs> and on top of it all, his teeth were like like shark teeth. He kept wanting to, to dip them into drawn butter, right? Oh, man, it was awful. <laughs> and these, these claws, I'm telling you, were there strong as vice grips. I'll bet they were. Yeah, scary. Yes. I'd love to see him at a wedding, you know. Oh, man. Give, give him the big size ring. Yeah. You ever put him near the boiling water to see what he would do? <laughs> no. I bet if he gets near a hot tub, he gets nervous. <laughs> Probably so. <laughs> <laughs> put a rubber band over those things. That's right. Put a rubber band on those hands. That's right. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a man named Arnie Morton? <laughs> Arnie Morton? Yeah. <laughs> no, I sure haven't. No, I was just saying, you put him on a, put him on a silver platter. <laughs> we have three, four, and 160 pounds tonight. He <laughs> was 145 pounds. There we actually. go. <laughs> Can I get some horseradish with him? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> some drawn butter. <laughs> well, thank you, Chad. Thanks, Tom. You're the best. Thank you. See, this is what people think. All you people, all you geeks who have all these, like, um, <clears throat> defects... And we're not saying anything. This is what we're thinking. I just want you to know. Sam on the Tom Like You Show. Hello. Long time, first time, Tom. Thank you. Hey, this story's going to get you. I know this guy that I work with. He's got a big old hump behind his head. A big old hump? <laughs> he hides it with his hat. Really? I think, I think he wears a lot of turtlenecks or something. <laughs> no, I don't. So he's what got what, like a big hump, like a kind of a Quasimodo thing going on? <laughs> not, not that quite big. How big a hat do you have to put over that? <laughs> What's that fits all? You can put like a miner's uh, helmet on. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. Yeah. I was telling him he should paint a face on it. That's right. <laughs> I want you to meet my brother. He's my little brother. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He always travels with me. Siamese twins. That's right. <laughs> now, did anybody ever say anything about it? Uh, yeah, at first, but you know. You to him it. or to others? Oh, we talk about amongst each other, but then what I didn't know. I when didn't he know comes in, it. nobody says anything, right? Everybody acts like everything's normal. I didn't know anything about it. One day I asked him, why do you always wear your hat like that? <laughs> <laughs> he cuts me out. See, I wonder of all the people with the defects, I wonder if they know what, that we talk about this stuff when they're out in the room. We all act politically correct when they're in the room. Exactly. Hey, Bill, how are you? Good to see you. <laughs> and, and and they think like they're passing, you know, and then the minute they leave the room, you see that guy? Look at him! <laughs> Thank you for that, Sam. Hey, Tom, can you take me out? Here you go. one 800 tom It's Carrie on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Oh, no time for Carrie. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back to Carrie and more of your calls coming up. Uh, do you work with, live around, or go to school with somebody who has some kind of a defect you're not supposed to mention? Tell us. The Tom Like His Show. This is the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles, 1-800-5800-TOM. Right there you are. You go to school with or work with or somebody you know works with somebody with some kind of major defect. And you've been told, no matter what you do, don't refer to it. Don't mention it. Catherine on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom, I'm one of your freaks. You are? I am. How so? I have. Uh, I was actually born with no eyes. So you're not just blind. You have no eyes. Correct. So I what? A, what do you have where the eyes are? I have prosthetic plastic eyes. I see. And so people look at you and they think you can see them. Well, I I can't. Obviously, I can't make eye contact. It's like that guy you were talking about earlier. So they can tell. And I have a seeing eye dog, so they can tell that I'm blind. Uh huh. But you know what? I don't mention it because it's not relevant to just about anything I do. By the way, I've never heard of that. I've heard of lots of defects. I've never heard of that one. Is it unusual? It's pretty rare, yeah. It's called anophthalmia. They don't really know 
you know, where it comes from or whatever. Right. So, so before you had the prosthetic device put in there, what was in there? Just some big Nothing. hole? Just a big hole. Oh. Just a big hole. And they had to, uh, like, shape my eye sockets when I was an infant so that, you know, my face didn't collapse. Oh, boy. Because that would have really sucked. You could have sold, like, product placement in there. You could put, like, logos in there. Yeah, actually. Uh, you could have put a, a couple of, like, Miller Beer logos in there, some McDonald's logo or something. You, can, you, can, you get new eyes every, like, six or seven years, so you could change the color to, like, green or, you know, horrible pink or something. Yeah, but you could be really to. stylish. You'd get something really cool. No, I just got blue. But can I bitch for a minute, Tom, about that? Of course. Dude, people, when you see a blind person on the bus or whatever with their seeing eye dog, don't ask them, what's her name, how old is she, how long have you had her? See, this is why we don't mention stuff, because people ask us the same damn questions every day. Oh, boy. It's so annoying to answer. Do they all act like you're normal, like they all act like you got eyes and stuff, like you can see no, them? No, no, no. I mean, they... Do they ever ask you, like, are those you realize? <laughs> no, they never do. Their way of going about it is to ask about the dog, because that's what they're comfortable with. Do you wear with. shades? I mean, do they, they? can they see that you got two fake eyes in there? They can't tell they're fake, no. They just so, can't. They can tell. Do, like, do people get confused, like they look you in the eye and they think you're, like, not paying attention to them? I guess some really clueless people do. Yeah. I mean, you can you can tell. I guess people move differently or, I don't know, there's like, there's like... Uh, How would you know? <laughs> there's like cues, I guess, that people give off that say... Well, yeah, I'm like fine. when someone talks to you, like you look at them. That's of normally course. what you would do with your eyes. And well, I imagine you someone talks to you and your eyes just kind of stay fixated. Right, because I can't move them. So I bet there are people who think you're not paying attention to them or you don't like them. or It could be. I try to, you know, make sure that they know I'm listening to can them. Can you make them move? Can, can you make the eyes move or no? No, I can't. So they're always looking in one direction? Yeah. No matter what? Right. Do you tell people, hey, they're fake eyes? Not unless they ask. Cause I don't have any eyes. What do you mean? Why am I not looking at you? You moron? I don't have eyes. This kid, when I was, like, in seventh grade, I was, like, going around the track or whatever, and this kid came up to me and, like, wouldn't believe that my eyes were fake. He was like, what's wrong with you? And I told him, and he wouldn't believe me, so I took them out in front of them. You hit, him out, you hit yourself with the back of the head, but... Yeah, he, like, <laughs> almost threw up. It was really funny. <laughs> Did both eyes pop out? Yeah, I can take them out. You do? Yeah. Well, do you I take them out at night? Do you put them, like, in a glass? What do you do with them at night? They're, they stay in. They stay in? Yeah. They stay I... in unless, like, there's something wrong, you know? Now, have you ever lost one? Do you ever go to, like, the lost yeah, and found? Yeah, actually, you won't believe this. No. I lost one in a river. And in a I river. Had... You didn't jump in after it, did you? Dude, I was like running around the rocks. Chasing. I was looking for it. Then I forgot. I don't have any eyes. I found it, Tom. You found it? My dad did. Your dad found it? Yeah, he didn't want to Your jump dad jumped it. into the river and found your missing eye. Yes, he did. Really? Yes, he did. Wow. Yep. That's kinky. Yeah. Well, it's not that kinky. You ever done anything kinky? Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> After the night light, they might hurt even more. Yeah, they probably... Actually... I can touch the, the eye socket, the, like the hole. Really? And it just hurts a little bit. You reach in there? Are there, are there like working parts in there? What's in there? There's, well, the left eye, there's nothing. There's just a hole in, you know, skin in the back. Yeah. And then the right eye, there's like a tiny little eye under the skin that tried to grow and, and didn't. You can kind of keep stuff in like a change purse. Can I keep uh, well, yeah, bus, if I bus get tokens or something in there? there. Yeah, you store your bus tokens or uh, some chiclets in there. You can put stuff in there. Nah. It'd be easier than carrying a purse. Put your keys in there. <laughs> how whole, How big a hole do you think I got in my I have no idea. I've never seen anybody missing it's an eye. It's a normal eye socket. It's like yeah, but I don't know how deep that goes. It's like the size of a marble, you know. That's it? Yeah. Wow. It doesn't go, like, all the way back to my brain. All right. You can keep, uh, I don't know, your pills in there. I don't know what you can keep Good. in there. Good. You could get them, uh, you could put your pill in there and have it absorbed, you know, through the skin. You don't have to swallow it. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. I'll bet there, I'll bet there are freaks, I'll bet there are freaks who are like coke fiends who like, uh, you know, they just kind of like apply the cocaine to the, um, the, the mucous membranes in there. I don't know, man. I guess you that's another way to do it. Save your septum. Yeah, exactly. Drug free for me, man. All right, just check it. Yep. All right, Catherine. And All by right, the way, do you have a boyfriend? I do. You do? And mm -hmm. is he a freak or what to do? No, he's a normal guy. How do you know? Maybe he's looking into those eye sockets going, oh, my Cause God. Because he is the hottest guy ever, man. How do you know? Because I can touch him, dude. Yeah, but <laughs> you don't know what he looks like. You know what? All that matters is what he feels like when he's against your skin, babe. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah. Just check it. Oh, yeah. Why? He's sighted and everything. That, I don't want to date blind guys. That covers for a lot of sins. 
Blind guys are like dorks. I don't want to date them. My boyfriend's the hottest guy in the world, and I've got no eyes, so I would know. Well, I can tell you what he looks like. How can you tell me? You've never seen him. Okay, I can tell you what he feels like. <laughs> I'm sure you want to know that. I'm sure he feels great. He does. Certainly, I would tell all you boys out there who don't have the looks or the money, this is your girl right here. Oh, come on, Tom. I don't date losers. How would you know a guy was a loser? You couldn't even see his net worth thing. Well, let's see. Does he have a job? Does he make money? Is he a nice guy? But by well? God, he can tell you anything. How could you check? How can I check if he's a nice guy or if he has a job? How can you check if he has a job? How can you check if he has a net worth? Honey, here's my well, net worth statement. Oh, you can't see it. Check on him, I guess I've got an eight-figure net worth. Look at it. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't see it. It's right here on this piece of paper. Well, Tom, I could go online and, like, do a credit check. By the way, can you change this hundred? Does he what now? Can you change this hundred dollar bill? Well, that's actually, you know what? I, I have a system where I can tell what bills are. Really? Yeah, on the computer. You can scan them in and it'll tell you. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's check it. Specialized software. You know, as a kid, you know, you had the guy at the newsstand, the, the blind veteran or the newsstand. There's a hundred? Oh, then yeah, tell I, me the daily news. I wouldn't try to sell stuff to people because I wouldn't be sure they were going to give me the right money. I really wouldn't. And do you use that drive-up ATM where they've got the instructions in Braille? Those things are crap. Most ATMs have just like... You've driven up and used them? What? Are you kidding me? You can't even like... Most ATMs don't even have the Braille instructions. They just have Braille numbers. Oh, here in L.A.? What are you... Yeah, I know you're in Pittsburgh. But here in L.A., we have Braille instructions oh, at the yeah? drive-up window. I'm not kidding. Oh, that's kind of stupid. Yeah, I know. I mean, if, if you're driving a car and you read Braille, you've got bigger problems than uh, figuring yeah. out how to make a deposit. If you're trying to drive, you're going to make it about two feet before you're going to kill somebody. Exactly. All right, well, you know what? I have a feeling we can have a really, really sexual conversation. You with the no, I'm a little bit taken for you, Tom, and you're a little bit old and overweight for me. I'm sorry. How would you know? Because you told us all. Look at me. I'm 150 pounds. Look at me. I'm yeah, spelt. Man. I listen to your show. I know better than that. Andy, I tell you what, I'm going to give you my net worth statement right now. <laughs> Tom Likas. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. On... Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Bree on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, I love you. Thank you. So I am actually one of those people who said this stupid thing to the person that was a little different. Always. And, um, <laughs> what, was wrong with the, what was wrong with the person? Well, um, I walked into a Hot Topic, and there was a gal there that um, had a patch on her eye, right. or her non-eye. And um, I walked in, and she said, hi, guys, how are you doing? And I said... Oh, hey, and I just noticed that she had a purple spiky hair. So I said, wow, I love your hair. It's great. And she turns around, and she's got the patch on her eye. So I'm thinking, oh, man, don't do it. Don't say something stupid. You Yo, always- ho, ho, and a bottle of rum. <laughs> you always say the stupid thing. And so I'm thinking, and I start to shake like I'm nervous because I know I'm going to say something stupid. So she continues to talk about her hair, and she says, yeah, I use this new product. It's whatever. And I, she said, do you want to feel it? And I said, yeah, sure. And I reached back and I feel the back of her head and it's all spiky. And I said, well, that's, well, that's spiky. That'll po- poke your eye out. <laughs> and she goes, she just looked at me and I looked at her and then I just, I was just retarded. Did she tell you how her eye got poked out then? <laughs> no, she didn't. She just, she kept talking like it didn't happen, but it happened. Oh, and boy. I felt so stupid and I, yeah, it was rad. Ahoy there, mateys. Yeah, I know. And then I just, um, I she just kept talking about her hair, and I just looked down, and I said, you know, I got to go. So <laughs> I walked away and never went back. <laughs> so that's it. I am one of those people. Well, thank you for that, Bree. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Bye. Bye. 1-800-5800-TOM. Carrie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Carrie. How's it hanging? Hanging right, Carrie. Right, huh? Yeah. Well, I got a cousin. She's got a lazy eye. Yeah. So what happens is, is that she'll be staring up one way, and then she'll be looking at you. Yeah. While yeah. you're sitting there talking. Right. No, I, I know. That's what we're talking about, these defects. All right, so she, one eye looks at you, and the other eye is, like, on, off on a tilt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, off in its own little 
world. And yes. I'm like going, oh, my God, I didn't realize this until I was about, oh, eight, nine, ten years old. And um, I talked to my mom about it. I said, what the hell is wrong with her eye? And she goes, don't mention anything. Don't say anything about it. Yeah. And Just I'm act like, like everything's oh normal. God. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the other thing that was wrong with her when she was growing up, she had this big-ass um, ball of fluid on her foot. She had to go through multiple operations to get rid of it. What, it was like it was like a big blister or something? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. It was crazy. So, like, there was, like, a big piece of skin that looked like a balloon, like a skin balloon with liquid in there? Yeah. Oh, my God. It was the grossest thing I'd ever seen. She'd be in and out of cast for, like, a Can year I pop year. that for you? <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. Come here. I got a safety pin right here. Uh-huh. Exactly. You wanted to do it, too. <laughs> Straight up. I'm like... <laughs> I'm like going, oh my God! Is oh. seen this girl on crutches? Oh. She couldn't walk in crutches even if you paid her to. Oh my God! She'd sit there and have her foot hanging back and sitting there trying to gimp along, and I'm like going, oh my God! Mm. What circus did you come out of? <laughs> I love that. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Real. I watch the show, but I don't agree with everything, and I just want But to... you can't stop listening. It's like a bad car wreck all of a sudden. You, you, you see one, you, you stop on the highway. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, the humanity. Oh, Jesus. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. Is our telephone number Robert on the Tom Likas show? Hello. Hey Tom, how's it going? All right, Robert. It's good to get on the air finally. I know. Um, I was uh, I was playing golf uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, the fourth of our foursome walked up to introduce himself to all of us, and he had a, uh, a stubby arm like you were talking about. Did he have the little uh, stubby fingers? No, he had a he had a complete hand. He got oh he got a complete hand, but the, at the end of like half arm, a half an arm. Exactly. So he had like not even an elbow, and then a little hand at the end. Yeah, exactly. And he walked. And was it a full fledged hand or just like half a hand? Full fledged hand, buddy. Full fledged, full size. Yep. Or like a little baby hand at the end. No, full fledged. Full fledged hand. Yeah. Yeah. So he walks up and uh, and you know introduces himself, and everybody's got to shake his hand, and for the rest of the day. Whenever he's up to hit, we all have to watch him swing. And no. it, was like, it was, it just hurt every time. It was just like, oh, my God, somebody's got to say something. I'll but, bet it did. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was, that, was, that was an interesting day. I'll bet it was. And it was just kind of like, what are you doing out here, dude? Did you uh, talk to him about his arm? No, actually, I tried to give him some tips. but uh, Nice hand. <laughs> give that man a hand. <laughs> exactly. But, um, yeah, so that, that's my story. All right, sounds good to me. BJ on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, BJ. Love the show, man. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you. I got a story for you. I work mm. in a professional setting. Right. And there's a guy, Mongolian gentleman, uh, who's basically got uh, a piece of his ear that's not on that cartilage part that's kind of stuck out, looks like a Rice Krispie treat. Really? You know, I've never seen one of those. Oh, boy, it's got hairs growing out of it and everything. Wow. Absolutely amazing. I only have two guys at work that I can talk to about this, and, and nobody else seems to pay any attention to it. No, they're paying attention. They don't want to talk about it, but they know it's there. See, what we want to know is if he's ever tried to cut it off. You know, he's tie a piece of string around it and pull it off or, he, you know, cut it shaven. If it bleeds, how, how long does it bleed for? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's does that happen a lot? What do you think? Oh, I imagine so. I mean, I know I would try to pull it off as a kid. <laughs> what about yourself? Uh, I haven't seen it, but uh, I'm sure you're right. I got another one. One more story. There's a yeah. guy I went to school with. He basically had a trigger arm. Short arm, but his fingers, he only had his index finger and a thumb on his Blackberry. No. Yeah. But you know what? The school about it, he embraced it. <laughs> he knew he had a trigger, and he had suits custom tailored with, with, with everything, bells and whistles. And he walked around like, you know, his poop didn't stink. I love that. <laughs> you did, did you? 
I loved it. Absolutely loved it. <laughs> All right, Tom. Uh, take me out old school style with the gracias. All right. Here you go, BJ. Gracias. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's our telephone number. It's Mina on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? All right, Mina. So I've got an interesting story for you. Um, I work part-time for a small law firm that I go in just to do contract work. And every so often when I go in, there's a young paralegal that works there. And he has a mouth full of gum and these little itty-bitty rice-sized teeth. And I rice can't size. Can stare at it. Really? Uh-huh. And he comes over and says hello because he doesn't see me for two, three weeks at a time. And he's chit-chatting. And I can't help but to just stare at his mouth and wonder what happened to his teeth. They're like literally the size of little rice grains. Oh, my God. And it's not only the top, it's the top bottom. Unbelievable. You won't say anything about it. <laughs> well, what am I going to say? Well, I know, but you're thinking it the whole time, for God's sake. Our email address is Tom at... BlowMeUpTom.com The Tom Likas Show.